Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Ben Danun with Danun Institute of Biblical Research. Just the other day I was studying over in the book of Genesis about the story of Joseph. We spoke uh, in a country my wife actually was the interpreter here recently uh, for me to a group of people that were half English, half Slovak people. In fact, we will be in Kosice, uh, I believe it is the... We'll have to post it on our Facebook page or something there, but I believe it's the 14th or something like that um, next month. Um, but anyway, but uh, in, in the process of preparing for this message uh, to the little church uh, that was here uh, in Eastern Europe, I actually, um, something really came on my heart while I was speaking to the people there. And it was regarding how that Israel basic, basically exists on funds from around the world, especially the United States, where many of the gifts come from, from the United States government, that keeps the nation alive. Uh, it's not so much self-sufficient because it would be very difficult for Israel to do that. And then tonight, when I was preparing the news for Israeli News Live there, I run across an article that again made me realize I needed to bring and share this beautiful revelation that the Lord gave me uh, and it deals with the money that is given to Israel on an annual basis. Let me first share with you, though. It's, uh, it's on Israel, uh, Arut Sheba, IsraelNationalNews.com, uh, and it's called a deal. U.S. to sell Israel a squadron of F-35 stealth jets. Now, in the article, it's a $2.7 billion deal, to be, uh, according to the headline here, to be deducted from U.S. aid funds. The deal announced amid high tensions in U.S.-Israel's relations. Now, the point is, is that, of course, they go into the article showing how that even though that the United States and Israel are at odds over building in Samaria and Judea, that it still is willing to trade in different arms. Now, um, when Yolan went to the United States and met with uh, uh, Chuck Hagel, the deal was agreed upon then, but it hasn't been signed as of yet, so we don't know for sure that the U.S. will do it. But the interesting part is, is that it will be paid for by the United States aid that comes to Israel. So it's not like Israel actually pays for it. Now, some people often, they get angry with uh, about the fact that Israel gets so much aid. In fact, it's one of the leverages that is used against the Jewish people uh, in the Palestinian two-state solution, uh, in things such as this nature there. The different people around the or countries and nations around the world that do contribute, the United States being the leader in this, always are saying that we give to you, then you should basically do what we say. But Israel doesn't always cave into those demands, but it definitely puts a tremendous political pressure on Israel in making con uh, concessions for those that are giving them so much money. And then there's the other side of it. There's the spiritual side, the religious side, the, the, the different churches around the world that see literally billions of dollars that funnel into Israel from the United States. And then there's uh, uh, a animosity and anger and hatred. People that feel betrayed by, the, by their own government for aiding Israel. They say, well, they don't even believe it. Even Christian people will say they don't believe that Yeshua is the Messiah or Jesus in this case is Messiah. Why are we giving them this millions and billions and billions of dollars of aid if they don't even believe? Because America is supposed to be a Christian nation. Why would Christians allow their government to send billions of dollars to Israel in a case where they don't even recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, a Christian nation, that is. And then I ran across a beautiful passage when I was speaking the other day here in Eastern Europe. And what the passage was, was Joseph, when his brothers, who did not recognize him yet, that he'd come into power, he was in authority with Pharaoh, he was second in command, they would put him over his all of his house, over the store, storage, over the food, everything. And even though his brethren came and were willing to pay for the food to feed their family, Joseph always returned them the money. Now, Joseph in the story in Genesis clearly is a type of Yeshua or the type of Jesus of Nazareth, as many biblical scholars agree. And, of course, those biblical scholars also would agree that why many of them, why are we giving aid to Israel? 
They would be the same ones that would fight against the idea that aid goes to Israel when Israel doesn't even recognize that Jesus is Messiah. Well, let's take a serious look then. If truly the story of Joseph is a reflection of Jesus' relationship with Israel, in other words, they're sold out by their own people, they're, Joseph is delivered into the Egyptians, supposed to be dead, exalts right hand of Pharaoh, and now he is the one that is over the very storehouse, the, Egypt, or the Egyptians of that day, which would be the Gentiles of this day, who have been blessed by the hand of Joseph. In fact, if it wasn't for the hand of Joseph, they would have all starved to death, even the Gentiles. It was through his so-called saving grace that kept the Gentile people alive back in those days. In fact, every nation there came unto Joseph and had to sell in order to survive. And then I began to realize that Israel is a type again today. And the United States and the other countries that send the millions and billions of dollars of aid into Israel to a nation that does not recognize Joseph. They don't recognize Jesus. The Christian nations that are supporting them, they don't even recognize that it is Jesus in the background. It is because of Yeshua that this money is given to them. This is why the money is actually done. Now, some may argue and say, no, it's a political movement. It's a political reason. Well, no doubt politics played a part in it, even back nearly 4,000 years ago when Joseph was there with Pharaoh then. Because you remember, Pharaoh did not serve the God of Israel at that time. He was a pagan king and believed in pagan gods. But oddly enough, God calls that pagan nation to find favor with Joseph, who was a type of Yeshua, and as well his brethren, whom even the Pharaoh considered his brethren to be, uh, how did he put it there? When Joseph goes to, to his brethren and says, do not tell them that you're shepherds, because it's an abomination unto, unto the Egyptians, but was careful in the, about the way that they should present, their, present themselves to Pharaoh. It hasn't changed much, has it? But nonetheless, the money was always returned to the Jewish people. And then in the end, he reveals himself to them. Then the Jewish brethren of that day, Joseph's brothers, they wept and mourn as well once they recognized that their brother was actually what we would call a Christian today. And then they understood why he was so kind to them and why he took such interest in caring about their welfare. This is why Israel receives the billions of dollars, a nation that does not even recognize Joseph, a nation that does not recognize Jesus. They receive it because God's hand is upon them. And even in their blindness, he still is having mercy, keeping them alive. This makes you wonder how close are they to recognizing that indeed Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ, indeed is the Savior. He is the Messiah that was to come. I'm Stephen Bendenin with the New Institute of Biblical Research. We thank you for caring and for supporting this ministry. Please pray for us. And remember us in your tithes and offering as the Lord lays it upon your heart. God bless you and good night.